Heidi Lee. All the lies my mother told me. All the lies my mother told me. Heidi Lee. Raise your hand if you are a parent. Keep your hands up if you ever told your children that they are special and beautiful. You are a liar. I have seen some of your kids and I know that you saw mine too. We are all liars. Madame Contest Chair and fellow liars. I wonder if, if lying is one of the skill set to be a parent. Take my mother as an example. I thought that she has lied to me for over a thousand times for whatever reason they were. For all the lies she told me, there were three significant lies that I will never forget. And I want to share with you today. The first one, I call it the unforgettable lie. For those of you who knew me, know that I'm afraid of animals. I'm scared of dog, kids, uh, uh, children, uh, like, like animal, snakes, chicken, literally anything that is living things that is not a human being. Hmm, maybe some human beings. When I was young, I actually loved small animals, especially lizard. I thought that they're cute and gorgeous until my loving mother told me about the nature of a lizard. She said, when you attack a lizard, somehow the tail will detach from the body and somehow the tail will get to, into my ear. What? A tail will get into my ear? Can you imagine how scared I was? Wait a minute. Was that why Uncle Robert was deaf? Was that why he was wearing his hearing aid? Ugh, I have been wearing my headphone for a whole month. The second one, I call it the organic lie. I'm sure I'm not the only one that hear this common lie. Had your mother ever told you that when you swallow an apple seed, an apple tree will grow from your head? If that is true for all the apple seed that I swallow, I should be selling organic apple in the farmer's market. She also told me that when you swallow watermelon seed, a watermelon plant will come out from my tummy. At one point, I was staring at my tummy, panicking, waiting for the watermelon plant to come out. If I follow the same logic, I would be swallowing pennies, dimes, nickels, quarters. Hopefully one day, somehow for my body will grow a money tree. The third one, I call it the, are you kidding me lie? I can't believe that my mother actually told me that melted ice cream is poisonous. I wonder if she made it up or it was the lie from her mother. When I was young, I watched news and I heard people commit suicide from jumping from a tall building or jumping in front of a running train. I always wonder how come they don't eat melted ice cream? And as an adult, I realized that melted ice cream is milk. When it comes to suicide, melted ice cream, death by milk. What am I saying? For good or for bad, there's always a reason for a parent to lie to the children. Now that I'm a parent myself, I definitely lie. I had to lie to survive raising children. The best that I want to share with you today was when my kids were still very young, they could not read yet. I took them to the toy store and they will bring me the biggest Lego that they can find. 
and I will pretend that I was very excited. And I say, oh my God, that is awesome. I love it. Oh, let's see. And I will turn the back of the toys. And then I, I will pretend that I was very upset. Oh no, he said, display only, not for sale. Hmm. And then another time I have to lie that they were not old enough. My kids ask, how old am I supposed to be mommy? Baby, how old are you now? Three. Oh, so sorry. It said for children eight years and older, you are not old enough. Hmm. And then I put it back to the shelf. Don't laugh. It works. It works every time until they can read. Damn education. Do you know that there is a fine print to become a parent? They said, you are allowed to lie. It's okay. That's how you survive. We have to do whatever it takes. If it works, we do it. Looks like lying is going to be continuous from generation to generation. From all the lies that my mother told me to all the lies I told my children. I wonder my lack of lies will it pass on all the way to my grandchildren or even great grandchildren. I do hope so because that was one of my best. Can one be proud of a lie? Hmm. I would be lying if I say it wasn't. Parent, now that you hear my speech, raise your hand if you are not going to lie again. Oh, I just saw one hand. Liar. Madam Contest Chair. Fellow Toastmasters, take a trip with me down the road in Maryville, Tennessee to Maryville Corner Market. It is a wonderful store, has a great little cafe and some of the best sandwiches you will ever eat. As a matter of fact, the owner designs a lot of those sandwiches herself, having traveled hither and yon to find just the right ingredients. Now, if she did want to honor me with naming one of those great sandwiches after my leadership skills, I hope she would include some of the following. First, I happen to like tomatoes. Tomatoes take a while to grow though. And in order to get those really good ones, those heirloom tomatoes where everybody wants to save the little seeds in them so you can continue to grow them forever, you have to invest time. I want a leadership sandwich to know that leadership takes time. You want something good in it. You also want that leadership sandwich to have some meat in it. You want it to have something that'll stick with you and help you grow and get better. So roast beef would be a wonderful choice for that. We all like that good, strong meat that's going to give us that energy. Then we want a bread, a bread that also takes a little bit of time, but has some great flavor and leaves a good taste. When I lead, when I help others, when I help them reach their goals, I want them to remember it and to be excited about it. That roast beef sandwich with heirloom tomatoes on a good focaccia bread, that's leadership as I look at it. We want to grow, we want to get better, and we want to have a great taste left after it. Contest chair. Ladies and gentlemen, fellow Toastmasters, we were in the presence of a master this morning. Catherine walked us through not only a well-prepared speech, but an emotional speech that gave us examples of how we can continue forward. 
Did you notice throughout her speech about motion that she wove in references to transportation? In the very first point, she talked about a car slamming her finger. In the second point, she brought in her father's tow truck and then her very own bicycle. The third point, you may not have caught it as much, but it was the sound of her own feet walking away from her dad. Those are great examples that we can use and continue to grow, especially when we're thinking about how to weave an underlying theme into what we do. Now, Catherine's whole focus was the emotion that her father hid in his motions. As Catherine's continuing to grow, these are things that we can do as we continue to add some motions also. One thing that I caught was when that teenager was stepping away from her father because he wouldn't hug anymore. What about an example of a hug in motion at that moment? What about that snarly teenager face or voice that could have had that impact at that moment? Those are great pieces that will help that presentation by Catherine continue to rise, continue to grow, continue to even get stronger, which is what we're all looking for. Another piece there is some more pauses. While we're talking about motion and action, those moments of standing still can have some of the best impact. One of the first examples that I noticed could have been right there at the beginning where there was a section where he never showed it. To me, instead of ramming those words together, perhaps separate them so that that emotional impact becomes stronger for just that second. The best part of what Catherine shared with us today was that final call to action. Or as I'm rephrasing it today, a call to motion. We want that in what we give out there. Rather than dumping information, Catherine inspired. Catherine helped us find a way to move forward. So as you're climbing today, as Catherine's continuing to expand and move into motion, we all can travel together. Contest chair. Shomoto, Shomoto, Shomoto. Summer, 1976. I was 10 years old, shy, in sports camp, and afraid I'd bomb in front of everybody. Contest chair, fellow Toastmasters, and honored guests. By day three, I bombed in baseball, basketball, and golf. The coach ended the day saying, boys, tomorrow, it's swim day. I thought, cool. I'm a YMCA youth swimming program minnow, which means I can swim 25 yards without a flotation device. It also means I'm gonna show the boys at camp how swimming is done. The next day, swim time, as I strode toward my liquid victory. A camp kid came up. Your toe, it's stretched. Have you ever been confused by some news? The next kid who was attracted by the shadow of the first ran up and made it clear. Your toe, it's Huge! His shout attracted more kids. Their shouts attracted others until my feet were like a museum exhibit of a large alien corpse. Shouts of huge toe freak rang through the pool yard. And right then, my self-esteem was cracked, shifted, altered permanently. I had no liquid victory. Instead, I had new knowledge that my big toes were really, really big. And an open wound to my self-esteem that bled a question. What would people think of my toes and me? 
Have you ever had a fear that held you back? How did you handle it? I ran from mine and it caused me to miss out. Pool parties, no. Barefoot walks on the beach, don't even think about it. Open toed sandals, only with socks on. These toes, like Bigfoot, stayed hidden. But there were rumors of their existence and occasional sightings. Like when my nieces and nephews asked me to jump on the trampoline with them. Uh, but it wasn't really. I took mine off. My 12 year old nephew, William, approached. Hey, uh, Uncle Daryl. Yeah. That's a big, big toe you got there, Uncle Daryl. I mean, seriously, that's a circus toe. I ran from the fear of what others would think of my toes for over 40 years. Then, in the midst of my midlife crisis, I asked myself the big question. What am I going to do about these toes? And I thought about a time I was a teenager after another toe sighting complaining to my mom. Mom, I hate these gigantic toes. She said, Daryl, those are great toes. They're a sign you're meant to be a leader. As a teenager, I thought, yeah, right. But as I reflected on that as an adult, I recognized how my mom was trying to reframe my thinking. And it was like she was speaking to me again, saying, forget trying to change what others think about you and focus on changing what you think about yourself. And I started to see these toes differently, not as a curse, but as a challenge I had to overcome to be more the person I wanted to be. I decided I'd face that challenge. How? I'd show my toes. I started small around the house, then with my daughter at the playground and on family vacation, these toes were on full display and I felt the fear subside. But to squash it fully, I needed to show more toe. So I decided to take the ultimate step. I signed up for a pedicure. Just thinking about it terrified me. I asked my wife, Teresa, for support. Honey, will you come with me to get a pedicure? <gasps> Absolutely, Daryl. I love pedicures. You think they've ever seen toes like these? Daryl, I'm certain they've seen all kinds of feet. She paused. When we go in, can we act like we don't know each other? But it was full speed ahead. We went to the salon and yes, the pedicures took my foot and had some initial toe shock, but I didn't care. We got that pedicure done, it was awesome, and I felt victorious. I'd overcome a fear I'd had since childhood, and I thank my mom for giving me a fear-busting strategy. This made me so bold that now I go to the beach in my thong, toed sandals, and I don't wear socks. It's the show my toe strategy. And by the way, I say show mo instead of show more because I think that sounds mo catchy. Show mo toe means reframing your mind about yourself and the fear, then repeatedly facing it until you crush it. Reframe, face your fear, crush it. That's show mo toe. Now, when I'm feeling fearful or I'm in a pressure situation and want to put my best foot forward, I repeat to myself, show mo toe, show mo toe, show mo toe. Has anyone ever said something to you that caused you to doubt yourself? Have you ever said something to you that caused you to doubt yourself? My mom taught me that you, I, and everyone have fears and insecurities, but do you have one that holds you back from being all you want to be? Put another way, do you have a big toe? If so, show moto. Contest chair. <laughs>